A typical Friday and Saturday night scene. Random police checkpoints, lots of drunken drivers heading to the next bar, party or home. Many of the functions we depend on to drive safely are affected when we take alcohol. The brain takes longer to receive messages from the eye, processing information becomes more difficult, and instruction to the body's muscles are delayed, resulting in slower reaction time. Blood and double vision can also occur, which means the ability to see things correctly while driving is reduced. People are also more likely to take potentially dangerous risks behind the wheel if they have been drinking alcohol. Are you safe? Yeah. Look at these cars. Are you safe? No, no. Don't. You can't make it any time here. No, no. Yes. You are putting your life at risk. Yes. You are heading down. You are making it down. Let's go. Oh, that yes. one was that one. If you are going to drive, you should not drink at all. And if, if you drink, for instance, you should not drink as if there is no tomorrow. The essence is to make sure that when you are commandeering a vehicle, you have your faculty, your brain is working. Between the month of January and June, 596 offenders were caught in Uganda and prosecuted. Of these, 296 were within Kampala. The penalty for drunk driving is a fine of between 200,000 shillings to 1.2 million. But the courts rarely give the maximum penalty. Most offenders get away after paying the least. No wonder the repeat offenders are many. 200,000 and you come out. That's why I'm telling you that the law is not on our side. Even if you have killed 20, we shall open 20 charges and we expect court to give, to multiply the punishment by number of the, the 20, but they have their jurisdiction. And the officer's frustration is evident. How can they keep the road safe when the offenders are not adequately punished? Go to the and you find out how many traffic offenders who killed people through accidents are in prison. You are likely not to get any. So how do we better the situation? A few ideas include passing mandatory alcohol and drug testing in fatal crashes to promote successful prosecution of drunk drivers, stepping up reinforcement and supporting the police with enough breath analyzers. It detects the amount of alcohol in the blood. The moment to go beyond 0 0.35, somebody is incapable of driving a car. The problem with these breath analyzers, though, is that some people have learned how to beat them. Let's make all people who, call, who drink and drive be sentenced to imprisonment. There should be no fine. A hundred thousand. These are rich men, my friend. It is peanut. You are telling them to pay, to pay peanuts. Vehicle impoundment or immobilization could also be another solution. And also, putting in place strict laws, the first alternative should be jail time instead of fines. Court has powers to suspend your license. It has. The Traffic and Road Safety Act is there. I have never had any driver in Uganda whose license has been suspended. I have never had it. We, ha we want precedences. People are drinking, they're mature people. So they should uh, act like mature people because they know that drinking and driving is not right. I mean, you come up and you're like, you know, I'm drunk, I shouldn't drive. At least we need also to have self-responsibility. If you must drink heavily on a night out, have a designated driver, someone who will sit with you, not drink, but get you home safely at the end of your night. When it comes to alcohol, a drink is a drink. Do not be fooled. Know your limit. Josephine Karuji, NTV.